Now, another one that I love is insect repellent. Um, I don't know if you see, this is the DEET free, the extra safe for kids uh, variety. It runs off of iCaridine. Uh, I learned this actually at the, the camping trip. Apparently, um, DEET at a ratio, I, I think 30% or more is a known carcinogen. Um, so it causes cancer. And if a lot of parents are looking for alternatives, and so iCaridine is a chemical that is not yet known um, to, to cause cancer. And so many um, many parents are choosing a different type of uh, substance. But in any case, that's not really what the point of this message is, is there are going to be pesky distractions you know, along the way. Flies, there's, there's a fly running through my house right now, like right in front of me. But the question is, is this is fine if you have a strong sense of self-control. Right. If you have really strong self-control, you'll be able to not get distracted by any of these things. But if you have enough of these, it can be all consuming. If each bug that comes your way or each distraction that comes your way or pest that comes your way takes your full attention. And that is something that I realized. Uh, we realized in an incident at St. Isidore. Uh, where, oh, we, we had this like kind of reply all situation. And in the reply all situation, uh, it was this realization that people are getting notifications all the time. They're getting those pests, you know, that are bing, bing, bing. And so like at two in the morning or something, they're getting some kind of message it's like, oh, I can't handle it. And so if you have an emotional reaction to every single thing that you see online, other people are going to be able to control you. So it's important to have the capacity, the ability to let things pass, right? To recognize that things are what they are. Not everybody's going to like you, but that's okay. You can let things pass. And so, so that's another one that I think is, is, is very important is the, you know, these days, social media is an all-out war for your attention. And if we're not careful, it can take all of our attention away from the things that are really important in life, those 21st century skills that are going to help you the most in the future. And there are going to be people online, pests, that are going to say things about our kids. And if we don't have the right kind of repellent and we haven't built up that kind of resilience, we don't have the right... Repellent is like protections, right? So it's like it's defending, it's preventing these things from happening. And some parents do this by limiting you know, the screen time or maybe they, they do a little bit more careful conversations. There, there are two aspects. One, you could be like really calm, not let a bug hurt you, right? Like And, and let that distract you. Uh, and then the other is you, you have like a, a spray or something, something that repels them. It makes them, makes you not attractive to bullies, especially cyber bullies. Um, that is something that can really, really make a difference. And so what is the bug spray? What is the bug spray for online safety? It, it's about that knowledge and awareness of digital citizenship. If you don't like these systems, then you, you are not obliga obligated to participate in them. You don't give them your data. That's the key, right? Like, data is the new vote. You don't vote for them, right? And so you have options. And understanding what your options are, having that type of re resilience, is another thing that is very important uh, for, for our children moving forward. So the next one is, is this right? We're talking about nutrition, right? The trail mix. Um, almost every single moment that we are inside the boat, kids are asking, hey, can I have a snack? Have something to eat? They're always looking for some type of nutrition. They're always looking for some type of snack, maybe lunch or some food. Um, and we all need energy uh, that maintains our body, and it fuels our spirit. Uh, but this is why I feel 
uh, especially for Catholics, that our faith foundation needs to be regularly tested and um, tested for spiritual nutrition. Is this giving, is the types of food that we're giving them, the nourishment that we're giving them, helpful for their faith formation? Do we know uh, what is lacking in, in their for faith formation? How is this just words that they got to memorize? Are they taking any of this and turning it into action? This is a question that I often ask. What is the point of learning a bunch of stuff that you're never going to apply in action? And when would you apply that? Is it only when you become an adult? Is it only when you become a parent? No, it can't be, right? It has to be relevant to you right here, right now. And and this is the, the big challenge I have is that they – these are not just abstract concepts. They are a lived experience. What it means to, to be Catholic today is a very relevant one, and it needs to be contextualized, not like only within the, the context of where it originally originated, because we need to go back there to understand its context. In the same way, we need to understand our own context. Education is, is really just teaching the curriculum in the context of the students that you're working with. What is important to them? What kind of faith challenges are they facing today? What kind of nourishment do they need in order to be successful? If we are not asking the kinds of important questions about the types of nourishment that is needed, then we're not helping them, right? They're not, they're not growing, they're not learning, they're running through the motions because it's a system. But it's not a system, it is so much more than a system, right? This is, of all the things, and this is something I've said to my, can you hear that? Thunder is coming. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Dr. Ed for 2021 trustee, the thunder is coming. That should be my new theme. <laughs> so again, right? It, education has to be way more, way more than just a thing that you, you nibble on, you know, a little bit snack. It, it needs to be substantial. And we need to think about what we keep putting into the system, we keep putting into our kids. And so that's my approach is it's about you're learning this stuff, but do you really believe it? Do you really practice that in life? You know, are you, are you living your faith? Or is this just a, a thing that you read about? Is it a distant experience? This matters because I feel that our foundation, our foundation is potentially the most important thing that's going to lead us through our lives. Think about this, right? Like, in, in your life, there's going to be a lot of haters. There's going to be a lot of people who don't agree with you. There's going to be a lot of people who don't have the same faith background as you. Um, there are people who are going to criticize you. And there's also going to be trauma. There is going to be real trauma in your life. People may, may die. Um, there may be good friends that get hurt uh, or people who get sick and they're no longer around. What kind of foundation do you have? Can, is that a foundation that you can lean on, that you can go, when, when you have an incident that happens, can you lean on your faith? Can you trust it enough to go, you know what? There are things, like because one of the things that they say in psychology is that those with a faith background do way better from very critical incidents. And so I often, um, when I was doing my PhD, um, oh man, there were like many people, like scientists, who questioned like, why do you even, you know, why do you have a faith background? And, you know, my argument for them is even if nothing is true, in this lifetime alone, the research already says that that's going to be beneficial in your lifetime because it's going to help you have way more control. You're going, to, you're going to have way more mental resilience. You're going to be able to deal with trauma in a, in a bit better way. Huge. 